Here's some code that we developed in the tutorial so far, and maybe I typed it in again this time correctly, uh, maybe not. Clearly I should write some tests. Now when I run it right now, nothing goes wrong, um, but what I should do as a first step is go into the language menu, choose language, probably you'll have to click show details now, then click syntactic test suite coverage. So that's something that I had on previously actually. This way, when I run the uh, example program, then it highlights in black pieces that have not even been run yet. That means I have poor test coverage here because no test actually tried out these different pieces of code. So to start out, I want to try has tiger the empty list. That will at least make sure I check some of the code. So when I run it uh, with the right number of parentheses, then there's less black. Uh, and it print out the true as the result, but wait, the empty list does not have a tiger. True is not the answer that I wanted. So this isn't really a test yet, this is just an example call. To turn it into a test, I use the check form. The syntax of check is check colon, then the expression you want to try out, and then you use the keyword is, there are other things you can put here, but is is what we use most of the time, and that keyword starts on its own line, lined up with the uh, test expression, and then we write what the, exp the, uh, the result that we expect is. So here we expect the result false instead of true. So now when I run it and I have this test, I get an error that tells me that check failed. And if I have moved around, uh, I can always click the stop sign again to get back and find out which check it, which test it was that failed. Uh, so why did this test fail? Has tiger the empty list? Uh, it seems I put true here instead of false. If I fix that bug and run again, now my check passes. No news is good news. Check only complains if something goes wrong, uh, but I still haven't covered everything, so I need some more tests. I'll write another check. Let's try has tiger on uh, something that does have a tiger. So we'll make tiger uh, orange with three stripes, and in this case we expect to get true out. So this test again succeeds, but you can see I still haven't reached all the possible code. That's because this code is only reached when we have a list that has a non-tiger in it. So let's try this again. I'm going to start with that test, but I'm going to change the tiger to a snake, which is green, 10 pounds, and likes to eat rats. And in this case, of course, the result I expect is false. We only have a snake in that list. Now when I run, uh, not only do none of the tests fail, but also all the code has been covered by test, so this is a minimally good program. Now sometimes it's not convenient to put all your checks at the end of the program. The reason I put it at the end is so that I can call uh, has tiger, because if I try to call has tiger before it's defined, uh, then we get an error about that. But sometimes you want to write your tests before the function has been defined. The way we can do that, I'm going to move them in fact to the very top here, but I'm going to put them inside module test. And then I need to uh, indent everything inside of that. So I just selected all those lines and pushed tab that uh, re-indented it under this module test form. Uh, module says I'm going to put some definitions and expressions just like I do at the top level of the file, but in a more nested file, a more nested module that is, uh, this module called test. The name test is special because when I run a program in Dr. Racket, it automatically also runs the test submodule. Right? And then this test module is where I put all the checks. And when I say it, Dr. Racket automatically runs test, it runs it after the main body of the module. So that way, when I run my program, um, it gets all of the definitions first, and then it will go back a second time and do all of the test modules. So that way I can put my uh, checks before the function is even defined. You can use this for test-first programming. You can use this when you have complicated functions and you have uh, functions that call each other and it's uh, not convenient to put your test in the same order as all of those different functions are defined.